Shavnam Diaries Podcast Bhagavad Gita as it is, the book by His Divine Grace, Abhay Charanara Vinda Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Chapter 7, Knowledge of the Absolute, Text 24. Avyaktam vyakti mapannam manyate mam abudhaya param bhavam ajananto mama vyayam anutamam Unintelligent men who do not know me perfectly think that I, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, was impersonal before and have now assumed this personality. Due to their small knowledge, they do not know my higher nature, which is imperishable and supreme. Purport Those who are worshippers of demigods have been described as less intelligent persons. And here the impersonalists are similarly described. Lord Krishna in his personal form is here speaking before Arjuna. And still, due to ignorance, impersonalists argue that the Supreme Lord ultimately has no form. Yamunacharya, a great devotee of the Lord, in the disciplic succession of Ramanuja Acharya, has written a very appropriate verse in this connection. He says, Quote. My dear Lord, devotees like Vyasadeva and Narada know you to be the personality of Godhead. By understanding different Vedic literatures, one can come to know your characteristics your form and your activities and one can thus understand that you are the supreme personality of Godhead. But those who are in the modes of passion and ignorance, the demons, the non-devotees, cannot understand you. They are unable to understand you. However expert such non-devotees may be in discussing Vedanta and the Upanishads and other Vedic literatures, it is not possible for them to understand the personality of Godhead. Unquote. Stotra Ratna 12 By the way, I highly recommend everyone reading the entire Stotra Ratna. By the way, today is actually my <laughs> my wedding anniversary, and um, yeah, it's five years. Every all of our friends and family and uh, followers, subscribers, they're uh, congratulating us, and uh, we're very very grateful and feel very fortunate. Why I'm saying this is because Stotra Ratna is the book that um, the first book that it was like the first kind of like a exchange between me and my to-be husband when we just started um, uh, marriage negotiations uh, so um, he quoted a verse from Stotra Ratna I really liked it and uh, I asked him the reference and he gave me the book Stotra Ratna and I was reading these uh, prayers and I found them to be so like beautiful and wonderful and so poetic and really like um, Yamunacharya like the way because I knew Yamunacharya as that um, devotee who would say that whenever I, I think of um, you know like um, sexual relationship I spit at the thought that's how I always knew Yamunacharya but uh, Stotra Ratna is like really like such a 
such a beautiful composition by Yamunacharya and uh, now he's like like whenever I think of Yamunacharya I remember Stotra Ratna so I highly recommend you reading these um, beautiful glorifications okay see how interesting <laughs> small thing but uh, yeah okay in the Brahma Samhita it is stated that the personality of Godhead cannot be understood simply by study of the Vedanta literature. Only by the mercy of the Supreme Lord can the personality of the Supreme be known. Therefore, in this verse it is clearly stated that not only are the worshippers of the demigods less intelligent, but those non-devotees who are engaged in Vedanta and speculation on Vedic literature without any tinge of true Krishna consciousness are also less intelligent. Hmm. This can also apply to us, just saying. That sometimes we go into studying Vedic literatures or Vedangas, meaning Sanskrit, astrology, Ayurveda, and then when you talk Bhagavad Gita, people are like, yes, Krishna consciousness. As soon as you go into the Vedangas, it's like, where is like, where is any bhakti? Where is any consideration of anything? People, and it's literally known, and it's it's just, it's like tragic how such some um, sometimes like people get completely lost in the flowery language of the Vedas, in this kind of like, uh, yeah, speculation on that. But this is also Krishna said, uh, Prabhupada says, it's also less intelligent. Continuing. And for them, it is not possible to understand God's personal nature. So if we study Vedanta, speculate on Vedic literature, Worship demigods without understanding God's personal nature, that's we're being less intelligent. Because it doesn't mean that, you know, oh, worshiping the demigods is less intelligent. Like, I still remember um, uh, this year when Bhimla Prasad Prabhu was giving the Gayatri course, some student, they mentioned that some devotees don't want to chant Gayatri because they don't want to be sun worshippers, meaning like worshiping the sun. Like, we're not sun worshippers, we're not chanting Gayatri. Like, what? Hare Krishna, Surya Narayan? <laughs> Where did that come from? Some devotees, maybe, although I haven't met them, uh, that, you know, like, um, there is Shivaratri festival going on in Rajapur. Like, why not go there also and pay obeisances? And there are devotees uh, who see things for what they are, see all the demigods as Krishna's servants and... Uh, the gopis, they worshipped Katyayani. It's, it's a, um, like, if you do any of that without seeing God's personal nature and being Krishna conscious, you're being less intelligent. But also, it has to be both at the same time. Okay. Persons who are under the impression that the absolute truth is impersonal are described as abudhaya, which means those who do not know the ultimate feature of the absolute truth. Hmm. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is stated that supreme realization begins from the impersonal Brahman and then rises to the localized super soul but the ultimate word in the absolute truth is the personality of Godhead modern impersonalists are still less intelligent for they do not even follow their great predecessor Shankaracharya who has specifically stated that Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead Impersonalists, therefore, not knowing the supreme truth, think Krishna to be only the son of Devaki and Vasudeva, or a prince, or a powerful living entity. 
This is also condemned in the Bhagavad Gita 9.11. Avajananti mammudha manushim tanum ashritam Quote, only the fools regard me as an ordinary person. Unquote. The fact is that no one can understand Krishna without rendering devotional service and without developing Krishna consciousness. The Bhagavatam 10.14.29 confirms this. Atha pitei deva padam bujadvaya prasada leshanu grihita evahi janati tatvam bhagavan mahim no nachanya ekopi chiram vichinvan. Quote, my lord, if one is favored by even a slight trace of the mercy of your lotus feet, he can understand the greatness of your personality. But those who speculate to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead are unable to know Him. Oh, it's addressing the Lord. Are unable to know you, even though they continue to study the Vedas for many years. Unquote. Hmm. Oh, this is 1014. This is Lord Brahma's prayers. <laughs> okay. Nice. One cannot understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, or his form, quality, or name simply by mental speculation or by discussing Vedic literature. One must understand him by devotional service. When one is fully engaged in Krishna consciousness, beginning by chanting the Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, then only can one understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Non-devotee impersonalists think that Krishna has a body made of this material nature and that all his activities, his form and everything are Maya. These impersonalists are known as Mayavadis. They do not know the ultimate truth. The twentieth verse clearly states Quote, Those who are blinded by lusty desires surrender unto the different demigods. Unquote. It is accepted that besides the Supreme Personality of Godhead, there are demigods who have their different planets and the Lord also has a planet as stated in the 23rd verse Devan Devaya Joyanti Madbhakta Yanti Mamapi the worshippers of the demigods go to the different planets of the demigods and those who are devotees of Lord Krishna go to the Krishna Loka planet. Although this is clearly stated, the foolish impersonalists still maintain that the Lord is formless and that these forms are impositions. From the study of the Gita, does it appear that the demigods and their abodes are impersonal? Clearly, neither the demigods nor Krishna the Supreme Personality of Godhead are impersonal. They are all persons. Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead 
and he has his own planet, and the demigods have theirs. Therefore, the monistic contention that ultimate truth is formless and that form is imposed does not hold true. You know, the worst thing about this, um, like, why these topics are constantly discussed, constantly discussed again and again. Krishna himself bring this, brings this up. It's not like only Srila Prabhupada, he defeats the Mayavadi philosophers. Not like only Srila Prabhupada, he brings up these topics, topics. But Krishna himself says that some people say that I was impersonal before. These people have always existed, and for some reason, uh, they're very, very stubborn and adamant, and they are—they can really poison somebody with, like, who has like, who doesn't have strong understanding of the scriptures, like on a subtle level or directly. And this is just. It's really important for us to to know our stand and to know how um, such people, like what arguments these people give and how to defeat them. So, it is clearly stated here that it is not imposed. From the Bhagavad Gita we can clearly understand that the forms of the demigods and the form of the Supreme Lord are simultaneously existing and that Lord Krishna is Satchitananda, eternal, blissful knowledge. The Vedas also confirm that the Supreme Absolute Truth is Anandamaya Bhyasat, or by nature full of blissful pleasure, and that he is the reservoir of unlimited, auspicious qualities. And in the Gita, the Lord says that although he is Aja, unborn, he still appears. These are the facts that we should understand from the Bhagavad Gita. We cannot understand how the Supreme Personality of Godhead can be impersonal. The imposition theory of the impersonalist monist is false as far as the statements of the Gita are concerned. It is clear herein that the Supreme Absolute Truth, Lord Krishna, has both form and personality. Form and personality. Mm. Yes. Okay, we shall continue tomorrow. Thank you so much for tuning in today. The book links, previous episodes, timeline, and biography of the author can be found on shravanamdiaries.com. The link is in the description, and we shall see you tomorrow. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna.